Yo, what is up guys, Shiraz here. I got another awesome video for you today. Today we're gonna to be learning how to deploy Kubernetes from scratch on AWS in five minutes or less. What is Kubernetes? I'm so glad you asked. It is container orchestration software. All right, a lot to unpack there, but if you've never heard of Kubernetes, I'm gonna break it down for you. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time describing what Kubernetes is, but I'll post some great links down below on how I learned what Kubernetes is. And once I learned it, there's, there's no going back. It is the ideal way to deploy software. So if you are involved at all with software engineering, application development, deploying software, your sysadmin, you're managing software on servers or anything like that, or engineering manager, you're gonna wanna learn this. It's the new hotness of software deployment and management. So I'll give you a little bit of rundown on what it all is. All right, so container orchestration for your application. If you design and create an app and it's any sort of complex app, there's a lot of different ways to, to run it, to deploy it, to keep it always available for your users. And containerizing your application is one of the best ways that you can do it. So it kind of compacts it all into one isolated entity that is not gonna be affected by other software on your system. It's safe, it's secure. And then you can deploy it on different servers in a very easy to manage manner. So the first step in like proper application deployment is to containerize it. So once you have that, you're gonna to wanna to find something that can run these containers on your behalf to watch them, to make sure they're still running, to replicate them. If one crashes for whatever reason and something is always gonna crash at some point, then you want a system that's just keeping tabs on it for you. And that's where Kubernetes comes in. So production grade container orchestration. And that is probably the, the shortest way that you can describe it. It's not the most straightforward concept, but once you get it, once it clicks, you're gonna be so happy to start knowing how to use this. So it has a lot of features, but down here, if you go, oh, by the way, I'm just on Kubernetes.io, their homepage, check it out. They got load balancing, self-healing, they got horizontal scaling. So really what this comes down to when it's most useful is if you have a distributed application. So let's say your app, whatever it is, it, it's, it's not just like a single, thing where you can deploy somewhere and people can access it. If it's more complex, it'll have like front end servers, it'll have back end servers, it'll have databases, you might have message queues, and they all need to talk to each other in a very efficient, seamless manner. And if one item goes down, you don't want your entire application to break. So you want to build redundancy with each one of those components. When you containerize it, now you can just create new pods of the front ends, new pods of those databases, multiple of them, and your application is just going to be able to pick one and talk to it. And so if one breaks, it's not a problem. Your application is still running, your users won't even notice. So that's where Kubernetes comes in. I'll give you, I'll give you one more reason why you should learn Kubernetes. Kubernetes administrator, let's say you're just administering Kubernetes, administrator salary. Just click on this first link here. At least in the US, national average salary for Kubernetes administrators, $144,000 a year. Like this software is the new hotness and it's in high, high demand. And like I said, it's not hard to learn. There's a lot to learn, but anyone can do it. And I certainly did it. And I can tell you that this number is no lie, is <laughs> average. Now for this tutorial, I'm gonna be showing you how to create your own Kubernetes cluster from scratch on fresh servers on AWS in five minutes or less. So why AWS? Well, I like it. It's easy to use. It works really well. It's fast and I haven't had any issues with it. Not to mention they have the free tier option. So you can follow along with me on AWS for completely free because the instances that I'm going to be using are going to be really lightweight. They're not going to be, you know, fast servers. So AWS provides this for you for free a certain amount per year, and we're not going to be coming close to that amount. So you're more than welcome to follow along. Follow along. If you're using other cloud providers like GCP, like Google Cloud or Azure, or maybe you have some extra servers accessible anywhere, you're more than welcome to follow along. The only requirement is that these servers just need to talk to each other on a network. So if you have three servers or three computers on a network together, then you're gonna be good to go. So why three servers? The way that Kubernetes works and when it's ideal is if you have multiple computers that you can install this on. Because if you have any sort of application that you are gonna be serving to any sort of user base and you want uh, availability, you want stability with your application or reliability, uh, you can't expect that servers are gonna be running smoothly, stably, like 24, 7, 365. Something always happens. Uh, and if one of these servers go down, 
You don't want that to crash your entire application for your users. You want an auto healing mechanism that can take whatever software was running on the other server that went down and just shift it over to servers that are running. So having multiple servers allows you to do that. So in AWS, I'm going to be using EC2 instances. Now these are Amazon's just general virtual machine offering. You can find the same kind of thing on any other cloud provider. They'll give you the ability to start up servers, connect to them, install software on them, and then use them. So that's what EC2 is for Amazon. There's also different ways to create a Kubernetes cluster. Now there's a lot of different management solutions that can do this for you. The one that I'm going to be using for today's tutorial is one called Kube ADM or Kube Admin. Uh, this is one of the earlier ones that came out when Kubernetes was released. It's well supported, it works in production, and it's relatively easy to use, so I'm going to be leveraging that. Now, there are other managed services out there, like Amazon EKS, which is a fully managed Kubernetes service, where you can create a Kubernetes cluster in just a few clicks. You don't have to manage your own servers. Amazon does it for you. But there are some pros and cons to that. Pros, way faster. You can get a Kubernetes cluster up and running really quick. Cons, you are losing the learning aspect of it. You don't have control of that cluster of those servers in a, in a deeper manner. You're not setting it up yourself. And when you set it up yourself and run it yourself, you really learn how it works. And that's what we're going to do today. But one last note before I get started, I am going to be copying and pasting some commands to get the installation going. None of it is going to be custom code. It's all going to be taken straight from the installation websites of the software that I need. So for example, I'm going to be using Docker as my container engine. Kubernetes requires uh, some sort of container engine to be installed on the servers that Kubernetes is running on. And so for that, Docker is my choice, it's well supported. And so if you just go to the Docker documentation for Ubuntu, you scroll down, you'll see the commands that you need to run to get Docker installed. And so these are the commands that I'm gonna be copying and pasting when I run through the tutorial with you. All right, so what's my setup? I got Amazon console opened here, it's fresh, it's in a relatively new account. I don't have any services running in here right now. So it's all from a from scratch environment. Behind my Chrome window, I have three terminals here. I'm using iTerm on my MacBook to run these three in tabs like this, which make it really easy. I'm gonna need three terminals because I'm gonna be connected to three separate servers. All right, we are all set to get going. Let me get the timer up on the screen. Looks good. And five, four, three, two, well, let's do this. Timer started. All right, I'm gonna go to the EC2 tab in AWS and I wanna launch some instances. So I'm gonna to go to the instance tab, launch instances. I want for the OS, let's take Ubuntu, Ubuntu 18. Uh, for the instance type, I'm gonna choose T3 micro and hit next, cause it has two cores. I want three of them. The rest of the networking is all fine. Default settings is fine. Doesn't need any tags. For the security group, I'm gonna choose the default security group because it has a rule that allows all the machines to talk to each other and that all looks fine. I'm gonna choose, I'm gonna create a new key pair called Kate's servers and just download that to my machine so that I can connect to these servers and hit launch. All right, cool. Now while that's launching, I'm gonna make one other adjustment to that security group and that is to enable SSH access. So here's the security group. It only has a single rule. I'm gonna add SSH to that. I'm gonna allow that from anywhere. If I was being a little more secure, I would allow that just from my home IP, but for now, this is fine. Let's call this first one master. Let's call this worker one, and we'll call this worker two. That sounds about right. They're all on and running, so that's great. Now I should be able to connect to them. Let's move that over there. And here's my terminals. Uh, ooh, okay. Uh, there's the key I just downloaded, which is chmod that to 400, then the key name. All right, and now we can ssh-i the key name, and then we're going to log in with the Ubuntu username. And now I just need those IPs. So for the first one, it's going to be that. We'll paste that in there, hit enter. Do I want to connect? Hit yes, and boom, we're in. All right, I'm just going to copy this initial string because that's going to be the same on each one. Did I that not copy? Come on, copy and paste and paste. And now I could just need those other IP addresses, paste, yes. And for the last one, copy, paste, and yes. And a quick sanity check. These are all different unique IPs, so that's great. And we can go ahead and start running the installation commands. The first thing is for Docker. So we're gonna add the GPG key. We're gonna do an apt update and then apt install. 
So there's app get install dash y docker. And that should be set now docker is installed. We're going to do the same thing for Kubernetes. We're going to add some GPG keys and then we're going to do an apt update and apt install for three packages and they're called kubelet, kubeadm and kubectl. Once we have Kubernetes and Docker installed, we just need to make one networking update to the system to allow bridging and it's an IP tables update. I'm just going to paste that in. That looks good. And that looks good. Now we can actually go ahead and create the cluster. And this is a command that's just going to be running on the master node itself, kubeadm init, and we give it a network IP or a CIDR block, and then it's going to start creating the cluster. So this will take a minute or two. So we can just sit tight and prepare our next commands. Once this is done on the master, it's going to give us a command that we can run on our two worker nodes or on anywhere, any of the worker nodes. So that should just take another minute. Are we on time? Three minutes, 36 seconds. Looks good. All right. All right. All right. Come on. You can do it. You can do it. Yes, there's the command that we need right at the end. So I'm just going to save that in my notes. Before I run them on the workers, I need to do a little bit of extra networking configuration setup. Set the kube config. Now I can run kubectl commands. And my first command I'm going to run is to apply a container networking interface called flannel. Now I can run kubectl get nodes here on this one. And this first one is up and running. So we'll put that on a watch so we can keep tabs on kubectl get nodes. And now it's going to run that command every two seconds. And while we're watching that, I'm going to run that join command on these two workers. Oh, we need to run that as sudo. All right, sudo kubeadm join. And this one's done, and this one's done. Now they're popping up on this kubectl get nodes command. And we're just waiting for them to get fully initialized. That one's done, and that one's done. And four minutes and 46 seconds. So now we can go ahead and run kubectl, you know, get nodes, obviously. We can get pods, there's not gonna be anything running, but that's totally fine. We have our cluster up and running on AWS. It's running on these three virtual machines that I've set right here. And now it can do all of the Kubernetes goodness. A quick example of what Kubernetes can do, let's go ahead and deploy Nginx to this cluster. Nginx, if you're not familiar, is a standard web server tool. It actually has a lot of different utilities, but it's a really powerful for network management and configuration and it can act as a web server as well. So to do that, I'm just gonna run kubectl apply and I'm gonna copy a configuration file that is commonly used for an Nginx example. And so here is an example configuration file that's available online. You can go and check it out. If I hit apply right now, it's going to create a new Nginx deployment. If I do kubectl get pods now, we'll see there are two Nginx servers that are going to be running across my cluster. And Kubernetes is going to decide what server to deploy them to based on its own routing rules. Generally, it just distributes it uh, to the best of its ability. And uh, if I do kubectl get deploy, I'll see what's controlling that. There are two instances of Nginx running. And when you configure this all properly, you can set it up so that when requests come in to your application, it will be automatically load balanced across these individual pods, these web servers. So, uh, and you can make as many as you want. So if I do QTL edit deploy on this Nginx deployment, and we scroll down to where it says replicas, replicas. we see that there's two listed here. Let's just, uh, let's just bump that up to 10 and save that. Now if I do kubectl get pods, we're seeing all these new instances of Nginx running in their own isolated containers that are gonna be distributed across my two worker servers. And if I make additional worker servers, then this will be distributed across all of them. So it's like a really powerful way to manage your application. So now they're all running. And then if I make new requests to the cluster, that request can be distributed evenly across all of these pods. And you can repeat that same kind of methodology with your database servers, with your front end servers, with any sort of component that you have with your application and get really high redundancy really easily.
And that is it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed. We got Kubernetes up and running from scratch on AWS in less than five minutes. Uh, I'm sure you guys might have plenty of more questions on Kubernetes. If you do, hit me up in the comments below and I'll get back to you. There's definitely a lot to learn, but I definitely recommend taking a look, try it out for yourself. You'll see how cool it really is. All right, I hope you guys all enjoyed. Take care, have a great day.